it'll be uh, pretty straightforward. You'll see four new iPhone 15 models, two low end, two high end, both in the same 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch screen sizes. You'll see a new titanium design for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. That's the first redesign in three years. You'll see on those higher end phones a better battery life, a lighter frame, and the A17 chip built on the new three nanometer production process. So a little leg up on what China's got in their new Huawei devices. Uh, the Apple Watch upgrades will be very minor, faster processors, new components, new colors, a black version of the Apple Watch Ultra. Uh, and then on the AirPods, you'll see a move to USB-C, that new charging standard from Lightning, uh, which is also going to be present on all four new iPhone models. Hey, Mark, Apple also is working on a revamped iPad Pro for next year and actually would be the first major overhaul in about a half a decade. What do we know so far about that? Yeah, the iPad Pro, that's going to be announced around the middle of next year. They're going to be moving to OLED displays on those for the first time. OLED is the screen technology that Apple uses across many of its iPhones at this point. They started rolling that out with the iPhone X back in 2017. Quite a bit better contrast, better color reproduction. It just looks better overall. And so that display technology will be at the heart of that iPad Pro revamp, uh, along with the new Magic Keyboard with trackpad that has a metal design. It'll make the iPad look more like uh, a MacBook. So talk to us about, I wonder what Tim Cook is saying these days, Mark, about China. I know he was over in China, you know, a month or so ago and how important China is, not just from their supply chain and also as an end market. What are the folks at Cupertino saying about kind of the, I don't know, the intermediate term relationship uh, with and or risk with China? I mean, there's, they're not saying much, and there's really nothing they can do. You know, yeah. all of their new iPhone 15 Pros are going to be built in China, and they have to sell hundreds of millions of those devices over the next couple of years. 20% uh, of their sales come from China, right? So there's really nothing that could be said. Uh, from their standpoint, I'm sure they are, are worried uh, internally, but from an outside perspective, they'll uh, definitely show uh, excitement about their future in the region. Something else I'm curious about is when we do see U.S.-China trade tensions rising up again, how does that affect new production sites that are sort of changing the way that Apple's devices are made? Yeah, I don't think at this point uh, there's any going back. I think Apple is expanding uh, its supply chain outside of China to places like Thailand, Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, and India foremost. So I certainly think that that's already uh, a given. It's already a done deal. So I'm not really sure there's anything more that could be done on the tariff side to accelerate mm. uh, Apple's push outside of China. That's already full blown and going full steam ahead. So, hey, Mark. I when we have phone, particularly with the phones, is there any opportunity going forward or expectation that there will be any kind of leapfrog type new versions coming out? Or is it just incremental here, incremental there? Uh, and then people are just going to get into some type of renewal cycle every three, four, five years. Is that kind of how they think about it? Uh, I'm not sure how they think about it, but I can tell you the way I think about it is that it's going to be very incremental over the next, you know, three to four years or so. It's okay. going to continue to be uh, the new devices this year are incremental. Uh, and, and while I say they're incremental, they're still going to be the most significant overhauls to the devices we've seen in three, four years. Uh, so certainly, um, you know, you'll get your opinion from you can ask 100 people their opinion and you might get 100 different opinions. Well, I'm going with yours. <laughs> I also talked to Anurag Rani. He knows a lot oh, about the phone. And he yeah, tells he me when, when, I, when I need to upgrade. <laughs> when it comes to different uh, countries like India, I know that has been definitely a hot place uh, that companies have been going into. What's kind of the story there when it comes to Apple? Well, the strategy for Apple in India is to replicate the success that they've had in China over the past 15 years. That is uh, the creation of the country as both a production hub, but also a key sales hub. Apple sees China as a market that it only has, you know, one to three percent penetration in. So there's a long way to go. Uh, very few people comparatively have iPhones in India. And so Apple sees it as a completely untapped market, just like they saw China 15 years ago. And the success that Apple has had in China uh, over the last decade plus has been unprecedented. And they want to replicate that in India. And they've started to lay the groundwork for that with two retail stores. They're working on three more, I've written. Uh, definitely think they're going to start doing more for India on the product side as well. But I've also heard as it relates to India and maybe just emerging markets in general, that some people argue they just need a lower price phone. They can't go into some of these emerging markets with their current uh, lineup. It's just too expensive. What do you think about that? 
I don't necessarily think that Apple is going to do the lower cost phone uh, in China and some of those emerging markets. It's very hard for them to split the SKUs on a, on a geography basis. Uh, so I think they're going to just push their lower price devices harder in those regions, like the iPhone SE and some of the older models of the iPhone, like the iPhone 12 and 13, the base ones. Uh, I also think that they can lower prices once they get some tax relief based on production uh, locally. Obviously, oh, India lowers import taxes and such if you produce locally, which is one of the driving forces behind Apple's work there. Uh, so I certainly think they're going to push pricing plans and installment packages rather than cut prices in India. Also, Vietnam has emerged as a popular new hub for yeah. Apple. What do we need to know about that? Yeah, India or Vietnam, in addition to India, Malaysia and Thailand, that's one of the other countries where Apple's pushing. They opened up an online store there last year, uh, which is one of the early indicators of when Apple's trying to plant a flag in a particular new market. Uh, they have... Um, as some retail presence there on the third parties, I'd imagine they would expand uh, with more um, first party retail stores there eventually. I also anticipate Malaysia to be similar uh, in that they're going to grow a retail footprint there too. And you're seeing some Mac production in Vietnam, but primarily Apple Watch and AirPods. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for giving us your time. Appreciate getting the update of uh, Apple, certainly in the news uh, today. Plus, they're going to have their new product launches coming up, so we'll be in touch with you. Mark Gurman, he's the chief technology correspondent for Bloomberg News. He's just the ace on he Apple. He really is. He, breaks he, he all knows the it news all. There. Uh, he's joining us uh, on Zoom from the Los Angeles Bureau. Speaking of nice office, the Los L.A. Bureau is awesome. There. Oh, yeah. Like, when I first went to L.A., I was like, boy, for Bloomberg, which right. every office is overwhelmingly it nice. Is. <laughs> I was like, eh. This is a, I was kind of like, eh. And as soon as I, and I went back like a year later, they changed offices, spectacular, top of everything. And, you know, that's all I had to do was say, eh, and they make the upgrade. I have to know what are the snacks like compared oh, to this awesome. office. Awesome. They just, and, they, and they got a great view. Uh, they're right in uh, um, Century City. Great office space there. So great job. And that's where uh, Mr. German is. So are you going to upgrade your phone? You know what? The battery is not quite good. So I feel like I, I might have to. And a lot of folks say, you know, maybe that's what Apple does. They kind of give you a battery <laughs> life, and then when the battery starts conking out right in, in time for an upgrade, and, and there you go.